Hello, I'm Brett Brown, Financial Analyst with EAP. I'm here today to talk to you about the executive summary for your business. Um, as Karen just talked about with the lead canvas, that is a great idea for presenting your business, but the executive summary serves as a great something that you can hand to somebody in a one-page format that gets your point across quickly and effectively. Here's a great quote that ties in nicely with the idea of the executive summary. You'll see here it says, it is my ambition to say in 10 sentences what others say in a whole book. Again, the whole purpose here is you wanna be concise and informative and re remove any unnecessary fluff when talking about your business. Here's an example of an actual executive summary. Before I go through each part in detail, I want you to just kind of look, look at the example. Because the way I like to think of an executive summary is it's really like a resume for your business. Um, just think about on a personal level, if you go to apply for a highly competitive job and you go in for an interview, uh, the hiring manager is going to be busy, not have a lot of time, talking to a lot of people. Do you want to go in there with a big, thick autobiography about everything you've ever done? No. You want to come in there with a one-page document that quickly highlights all the key, most important information as to why you're a good fit for the job. So the same thing applies for your business. If you're, for example, talking to an investor for the first time about your idea, they're going to be a busy person. They see a lot of ideas. So you need something that is well formatted, informative, and concise. Again, concise is a key word here. So now let's go through each section in a little more detail. Um, first, the top left, you have your general company information. A lot of this stuff is pretty self-explanatory. We just want to really make sure you understand what's expected to be there. Um, the key parts to notice are the initial product. Depending on your business, this could actually be a service instead. So it's would say initial service there instead. Uh, your FTE is full-time employees and contractors. If you are the only person, as a lot, as often the case with startups, you'll just have one here because you're the only one. But you want to make sure you have some sort of number there. The company stage, again, depends on the phase of your business. A lot of you here are probably still pre-launch, which means you do not yet have any sales or actual business. You're still in the idea phase. But if you are up and running, you do have sales, then you will put operational here instead. Then the monthly burn section relates back to what Nick talked about in financials. This is the monthly cost of operating your business. The next section, we have intellectual property. The big takeaway here is that there are three main types of intellectual property. You have trademarks, patents, and trade secrets. Uh, the biggest difference among those is that trademarks and patents are something that need to be legally registered. And there will be an attorney as part of the workshop that can help speak more on the details of this. Trade secrets are more informal, but still very important to your business. Uh, best example is if you own a restaurant and have a great secret family recipe that you can't get let other people know about, that's something you kind of keep hidden and close to you. That's a trade secret. Below that, we have capital raised. This, again, goes back to what Nick talked about with the sources of finan financing. You'll list here any capital you've raised in the past, how much, when, things like that, if you have, um, or if you just funded it yourself, you'd put that here. Financial information is the additional capital that you're now seeking to help grow your business or launch your business. And that ties in nicely to the next section, which is the use of funds. There you will break down how you're going to use the additional capital that you're seeking. Key thing here is you want it to be between three and five categories. Anything less doesn't tell you enough. Anything more is just too busy, clutters things. So right here is an example of four categories. That's a really good target to get to. Below that is your go-to-market strategy. That is really just a quick description of how you plan to obtain your first paying customer. Typically, this is something to do with advertising or marketing, but again, it can vary from business to business. Below that, your competitive advantage. Uh, to use a business term, uh, it's common in the business world, we call this your secret sauce. Uh, a pretty literal example of your secret sauce could be, again, if you had a restaurant with a secret family recipe, uh, that would be your secret sauce. 
But again, it does not have to only do with food. That's very important. Um, another example of a secret sauce would be if you have a patent on the next great design for the, a great biomedical product. Um, it can be anything, anything that separates you from your competition. Next, we have the management team. Uh, of course, yourself will be there. The important thing is you will want to not only have yourself on there. You need to have other people. Even if you're the only one directly involved in your business, you need to go out and find some sort of business mentor to, or advisor that can help build credibility for your brand, for your name, because uh, that is what investors and financial institutions, other sources of capital, that's what they like to see. They need credibility. Below that is contact information. And again, this is very straightforward, but it's very important. You know, make sure it's 100% accurate. And one other thing I'll definitely add is avoid any unprofessional email addresses. For example, if you come in to pitch an idea and your email address is wildpartyanimal at gmail.com, that does not build trust with any type of source of capital. I can tell you that right now. So just keep that in mind. Create a new email if you have to. Just get rid of your one from high school or one you may have had in the past if you need to. Next is the company name. This goes back to what D'Angelo spoke on, on your brand development. The key items you'll have here are your company name, logo, and tagline. Uh, the important things you'll want to keep in mind are, again, the emotional triggers of different colors. You'll want the brand to really represent your business. You'll have your company name. Then you'll need a strong tagline that's quick, concise, and also informative so that people really, really understand your brand when reading just a short tagline. Below that, we have the executive summary. And this is really where what Karen spoke about on the Lean Canvas, this is just another good way to present that information in a quick format. Key things to note here are, you'll see the top two sections are problem slash opportunity and solution slash product. You'll actually only use one or the other in each, so it'll either be a problem or an opportunity or a solution or a product. It just depends on what fits best for your business. Going through these sections, the other thing I want to point out is the competitors. I can tell you no matter what product you have, what industry it is, how great it may be, there is some type of competition out there. So be sure that you do not leave this blank and list some type of competition. And now in the bottom right section, we have a really just a high level summary of what Nick spoke about earlier with financial statements. You'll have one or ideally two years of projected financial information. Um, something important to keep in mind is it is okay, depending on your business, to have zero dollars of revenue in the first two years. And you can show that here uh, if, it's, if it's relevant for your business. For example, if you're a pharmaceutical company with clinical trials, or you're designing a brand new product and you're having to do multiple rounds of prototype testing, you will likely have no revenue for the first one or two years. You can put zeros there. Many sources of capital understand that that's how those industries work. And so really that is a summary of the executive summary. A uh, quick reminder that if any of these terms aren't totally clear to you, go back to your glossary of terms, look them up and make sure you fully understand all of this information.